Hi everybody, welcome back to Living Traditions Homestead. Well, these days we have been producing a lot of fresh milk here on the homestead, courtesy of our cow babe. We have been making so many things. It's been so exciting and so wonderful to have fresh milk in the house again. We've been making a lot of Greek yogurt, mozzarella, lots of things with cream, especially in my coffee. I just started learning how to make aged cheeses. Uh, and so I've produced two four pound wheels of Colby cheese. Lots of things to continue learning there. But I have been hearing from you all that you would like me to share with you some of the ways to use fresh milk or really just milk in general. So today I am going to be sharing how we make Greek yogurt. But first we need to go outside and Milk Babe bring in her wonderful milk. Okay. Good girl, babe. Good girl. Ciao, Ralphie. Well, today produced about the average amount of milk that we bring into the house on a daily basis. We are generally getting one to one and a half gallons of milk a day. Uh, so anywhere from seven to 10 gallons of milk a week. Now that sounds like a lot of milk. And if you don't know what to do with all that milk, it can be overwhelming. But over the past five years or so, we have been learning what to do with all of that milk from either cows or goats. So we are starting to get a handle on what to do with it all. And even though we're bringing in a gallon to a gallon and a half of milk every single day, our calf Ralphie is still drinking on Babe um, during the day, 12 hours during the day, 7.30 a.m. to 7.30 p.m. And we're still getting a gallon to a gallon and a half a uh, day to bring into the house for us. So she is doing a great job and we're super happy to have her as part of our homestead. So today I told you that we're gonna be making Greek yogurt. We are gonna be using one gallon of milk to make yogurt. That might seem like a lot of yogurt, but you guys, we go through a lot of yogurt here in this house. Actually, Kevin loves Greek yogurt. He eats it every single day. And I end up making Greek yogurt about once a week from one gallon, and that generally lasts us or lasts him. So today we're going to go ahead and make Greek yogurt out of one gallon of milk. Now Greek yogurt really is the only type of yogurt that we make here on the homestead and that's really for two primary reasons. Uh, the first reason is Greek yogurt is very very thick and that is Kevin's preference. Actually he doesn't like thinner yogurt at all so Greek yogurt is what we make here on the homestead. The other primary reason is that Greek yogurt is lower in carbs and sugar than standard yogurt, and that is because it is drained longer, and so more of the whey is taken out of Greek yogurt than like standard plain yogurt in the grocery store. It's pretty interesting, actually. Regular yogurt has about 17 grams of carbs, whereas Greek yogurt has only 10. Regular yogurt has 17 grams of sugar, whereas Greek yogurt has nine. And there's actually a huge difference between the two with protein also. Regular yogurt has 13 grams of protein and Greek yogurt has 24 grams of protein. And all of those are within an eight ounce cup of yogurt. So 
Because Kevin and I are eating a low carb or kind of keto lifestyle, Greek yogurt makes a lot uh, more sense for us than standard yogurt. And because there are a lot of carbs and kind of milk sugars within milk itself, that's not something that we can drink or use a whole lot of is, you know, milk in its normal state. So we need to use the milk in other ways that takes out a lot of the carbs and the sugar. And Greek yogurt is one fantastic way for us to use some of this milk. Now, the reason why we make so much Greek yogurt really is because we just have access to so much milk. But there is a really great reason to make Greek yogurt at home, and that is cost, honestly. Now, when we are not in milk, the brand of Greek yogurt that we always get because Kevin likes it the best is this Faye brand. And uh, this is the size container that we would buy from Walmart. This was from Walmart. This is from Costco. This size container is $6.77 at Walmart today. Who knows, like tomorrow. Uh, but a gallon of milk from the grocery store is about $3.75 right now for whole milk. It is a cost savings by making it at home. And no, you don't have to use fresh milk from your own cow to make homemade yogurt. You can buy a gallon of milk from the grocery store and make homemade Greek yogurt. Okay, you guys, let's get started making the Greek yogurt. At the end, when it's all done, we're gonna make something yummy. So I'm super excited to get to that point as well. Now, because I am using fresh milk, and this is actually milk from yesterday, I'm gonna be removing the cream that has floated to the top. When you buy milk from the grocery store, most of the cream, if not all the cream, has been taken out of it, but it's also been homogenized, which means the milk fats have been combined and almost like emulsified in with the rest of the milk, so the cream doesn't rise anymore. But on fresh milk from right from the cow, it's not homogenized, so all of the cream rises to the top. Now, most people who make yogurt at home, they take the cream off of the milk, they save it to either have in their coffee or you know make butter or cream cheese or something like that. Because when you're making the yogurt and when it sits for however many hours you have it sit, the cream rises to the top again, and but it still becomes cultured. So it's more like a yogurt cream. Not a lot of people enjoy that, so uh, they take it off before they even make yogurt. And honestly, I would rather have the cream in my coffee because I just love it so much. So we're gonna be starting off by removing the cream from this fresh milk. So you can see maybe a little bit, there is uh, some color differenti differentiation between the milk and the cream. So that's how you know uh, what to skim off. Also, the cream is a lot thicker and heavier, especially right at the top. So it's easy to, to tell the difference when you're skimming cream. In my opinion, the easiest way to make yogurt is by using an Instant Pot. And some of the Instant Pots actually have a yogurt button. So that is what you're going to want to look for on your own Instant Pot or if you are shopping for one online or at Walmart or something. I really do think it is worth getting the Instant Pot with the yogurt button. And if you're just in the market for an Instant Pot anyway, might as well just get one with the yogurt button. I have made yogurt in other ways, and this by far is the easiest and the most hands-off process of them all. So first, we're going to open this up. I don't have it plugged in yet. Uh, here is the bowl inside of here. We are going to just add one gallon of milk to this Instant Pot. Now, um, these directions are going to be for whether you're using fresh milk or milk from the grocery store. Milk from the grocery store is going to be pasteurized, uh, but you're still going to want to do all of these steps. Gonna plug this in. 
Now the first step here we need to do is we need to scald the milk. We prefer drinking raw milk. We don't pasteurize our fresh milk here on the homestead. And there are people who would say, well, why am I going to scald this milk or essentially pasteurize this milk before I make yogurt? Because there are so many wonderful, good uh, bacteria and probiotics and those kinds of things in raw milk, uh, which is very true. I agree with you. But using raw milk to make yogurt is kind of competing good bacteria. They're kind of going to compete with each other. So basically, after we're done heating this up, we're going to cool it down. We're going to introduce the live bacteria that is going to incubate in this milk and turn it into yogurt. If we were to introduce the live bacteria from the yogurt culture into the live bacteria from the raw milk, they're going to compete with each other. It isn't a bad thing. It's not going to ruin it or turn it into anything bad or harmful. It's just going to prevent your yogurt from setting very well. So it will make very runny yogurt, which isn't bad. It'll make, make like a, a yogurt drink or uh, something similar in consistency to kefir. If that's what you'd like to do, Go ahead and do it that way. But we really like the thickness of Greek yogurt. So we are gonna scald this milk. We're gonna bring it up to 180 degrees before we move to the next step. Now the nice thing about these instant pots that have the yogurt button, they do the entire yogurt making process, but in a couple different steps. So we're gonna start with step one. Our milk is in, our lid is on, and now it's time to do the first step within the Instant Pot. I know that this lettering is flashing that's just from the camera. Mine is not flashing by the normal naked eye. So we, have, we are gonna be doing is we're gonna press this yogurt button until it says boil. Okay. So it says boil, it's flashing right now, it will stop flashing and it will start heating up. Now on its own, this Instant Pot is going to bring this milk up to 180 degrees. When it's done, it will beep and then we'll come back at that next step. Now, depending on how much milk you have in your Instant Pot will determine how long it's gonna take. Uh, it's not super quick, so you're able to go ahead and do something else within the house, you know, within earshot of your Instant Pot. After it beeps that it is hot enough, we'll come back and move on to the next step. The instant pot beeped that the milk inside of here um, is up to temperature. So we're gonna take the lid off here. Now the next step in making yogurt is to introduce a culture into the milk, stir it around and then allow it to incubate. But right now, the temperature of this milk is so hot that it will kill all of the wonderful live bacteria in the culture. So the first thing we need to do before we can get it incubating and introduce that culture is to cool this milk down. I am gonna show you the, the fast way that I do it here on the homestead. I'm gonna carefully take this out of the Instant Pot itself and transfer it over to near the sink. To cool this milk down rapidly, I'm gonna float it in a sink of cold water. Now I like to float the bowl like this so that as much surface area around the bowl, around it and underneath it, come in contact with that cold water so we can really rapidly cool this down. Now I wanna show you that on the top of the milk mixture there is a skin that is developed on top of the milk really from the difference between uh, the heat of the milk and the coolness of the air. While we are floating it, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna remove that skin from the top of the milk because this is not a really wonderful texture to incorporate into your yogurt. So we're going to skim this off um, before we start mixing around the milk to get it to cool off quickly. Now there isn't really a magic way to do this. You just find something, a way that works for you over time and you stick with it. Oh my gosh, that was like the best I've ever done in one <laughs> in one scoop. I got it all down. I'll just dispose of this 
appropriately. Now that that skin has been removed, I wanna start uh, stirring this pretty quickly so that another skin cannot develop. And I'm really just gonna mix this back and forth with a rubber spatula, allowing it to float on the cold water. And we're gonna cool this down to uh, between 110 degrees and 115 degrees. That is the, the best temperature for us to introduce that culture. Now I'm gonna measure the temperature with this electric uh, meat thermometer that we use. I did really clean this well so that I'm not introducing um, bad bacteria into the, uh, the milk mixture right now. So we're just gonna keep doing this until the temperature comes down to 115 degrees. Okay, so our milk has cooled off to the right temperature. And the next thing that we need to do is essentially inoculate the milk with a yogurt culture. Now, there are several ways you can get an, a yogurt culture. You can buy like a powder yogurt culture from different companies online, uh, but there are easier ways to do that and a lot cheaper. So this here is the yogurt that I made last time for Kevin. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use about a half a cup of this yogurt to inoculate the milk. But if I just put a big scoop of this like right in this milk, it's just gonna kind of stay chunky and it's not going to mix very well with all of this milk. So first we're gonna thin this out before we add it to the milk mixture. Now this doesn't have to be complicated and you don't really have to worry that much about measurements, okay? So I'm just gonna pour some of this warm milk into this bowl and then I'm gonna scoop up about a half a cup of the previous yogurt that I made. Now, if you haven't already made yogurt and you're starting from the very first time, I suggest that you get a plain yogurt of whatever is your favorite kind of yogurt. So originally when I started making this, you know, these batches, I started with Kevin's favorite plain Faye Greek yogurt from the containers that I showed you at the beginning of this video. That's his favorite kind of yogurt. That's what it will end up tasting like. And so that's what we should start with. Okay, so now we have about a half a cup of yogurt in here and I'm just gonna take a whisk. I'm gonna break this up a little bit like that and then I'm just going to mix it up. Pour it into the bowl of milk. I'm gonna take my rubber spatula and then I'm just gonna mix it in really well. So our milk mixture is now inoculated with the mother culture that we started with, and this should produce yogurt that tastes just like what we started with. Okay, this bowl goes back into the Instant Pot. The nice thing about the Instant Pot is it can bring it up to the high temperature that you need to scald it and get it you know, ready, but we can also use it as basically an incubator for this yogurt. So I'm gonna put this top back on here, plug it back in. Now we're gonna tell the Instant Pot how long we want for it to incubate this milk mixture into yogurt. And we're gonna do that by pressing the yogurt button until it says 12 hours. There. So this is going to incubate for 12 hours and when it's done, it's gonna beep a bunch of times and we're gonna know that it is finished. Many other types of yogurts have shorter incubation time frame. The reason why Greek yogurt is incubated for so long is to give it that tangy flavor that Greek yogurt always has. So if you don't like it super tangy, then don't let it incubate as long. Generally, you'll want it to incubate anywhere from eight hours to 12 hours. The longer it incubates, the tangier it will be. If you stop it at eight hours, then it won't be so tangy, so it's really up to you. Our yogurt has finished incubating in here, and so now it is time for the last step, which is the straining process. Now, straining the yogurt is what gives Greek yogurt that nice, thick consistency. The longer you strain it, the thicker it gets. 
I'm gonna show you the easy way that I strain yogurt. We prefer to strain our yogurt for eight hours, at least eight hours, I'd say eight to 10 hours for that nice thick consistency that we love so much. It's a very easy process to do. Because I am straining it for such a long time period, I actually have it strained in the refrigerator. If you were only gonna have it strained for a couple of hours, you could probably leave it out on the counter. To strain this yogurt, I'm just gonna be using some pretty everyday basic things from around the kitchen. I'm gonna start off using a stock pot here, and I'm gonna put a, a one cup little storage bowl on the bottom and I'm going to put a nice colander on top of it. That little one cup container is gonna hold the strainer up uh, farther, which will create more space on the bottom to catch the whey. There's gonna be quite a bit of whey that's gonna come out of this uh, yogurt, so I want to make sure that I have quite a bit of room on the bottom. Next, I am going to put a piece of cheesecloth down in here so that when I dump the yogurt into the colander, it doesn't just all go through the holes. Now I have found that starting with a piece of cheesecloth or like a tea towel, when you, if you start with it damp, it will drain a lot easier than if you start with a piece of cloth that is still dry. So I'm just gonna drape that over here and push it down inside of there. To get the yogurt into the colander and the cheesecloth, you could just easily just scoop it with a big spoon. Uh, I actually prefer, uh, this method is just really fast and easy. I just take a rubber spatula first and just go around the edges. And then I cut it into kind of eighths, just like you would um, a pie or a pumpkin pie. Into eight, basically slices like that. And that allows for all of this to dump out really easily into my lined colander. Now that all of the yogurt is in there, I'm just gonna gather the ends together just like this. I'm just gonna twist this around just to create some tension inside of there. I'm just gonna twist this around and leave it like that. And we're gonna have it strain in the refrigerator for at least eight hours, eight to 10 hours. About halfway through that time, I'm gonna take it out of the refrigerator and check the whey level down here. Sometimes this will really fill up quickly. If I check on it halfway through, I have an opportunity to dump out the whey to give enough room for more whey to strain out. So about halfway through, I may do that. But right now, it's going into the refrigerator to strain. Well, the yogurt here ended up straining for about 10 hours. The colander and the cheesecloth did exactly what it was supposed to do. I did end up dumping out the whey halfway through and there was still quite a bit at the bottom when we were all finished after the 10 hours. Then uh, it was just a matter of transferring the yogurt from the cheesecloth into this container here. Sometimes it can be tricky because it is pretty goopy. So for one gallon of milk, you get seven cups of Greek yogurt, and that is pretty amazing. Now before we go, I have a really special little dessert to share with you guys. It comes together really quickly and is just a wonderful treat. For our very quick and healthy dessert that we are gonna be making today, we are going to be making strawberry yogurt mousse. We're gonna be using the yogurt that we made together, some heavy cream, strawberries, vanilla, and a sweetener. I'm gonna be using stevia drops. You would use whatever type of sweetener you enjoy the most. We are gonna start off by using one cup of the yogurt that we just made together. You can see how nice and thick it is. That, ex that is exactly how we like it. That's about one cup. We're gonna go ahead and put that in a bowl. To the yogurt, I am going to be adding just a tiny splash of vanilla. 
20 to 25 drops of stevia. And taking a whisk, I'm just going to mix that all around and get that sweetener and the vanilla mixed in really well. And this will also make the yogurt nice and smooth and creamy. Next, we are going to measure out one half cup of cream. Now this is a cream that we skimmed earlier in this video. We're going to add that to this bowl here. And using a beater, we're just going to beat this up until it is whipped cream with some really nice heavy peaks. We don't quite need the whipped cream yet, so I'm gonna put it in the refrigerator to keep it nice and cold. Next, we have to deal with the strawberries. Right now, they are frozen solid, but we need to blend them up. So I'm just gonna warm these up for a few seconds in the microwave. I know not everybody likes a microwave, just to make them not so solid. We still want them super cold, maybe even a little bit frosty, but not frozen solid. Now that the strawberries are just a little bit thawed out, I'm gonna blend these into just a nice puree, just strawberries and nothing else. And to do that, I am just gonna be using this mini food processor. This little thing comes in handy when I have some, you know, a little bit to uh, blend up, but I don't wanna get out like my big blender and I don't need my big food processor. Perfect. Alrighty, we have all three components to our strawberry yogurt mousse. We're just gonna combine them all together and it will make a really nice, easy, kind of light and fluffy dessert. So here is our yogurt that we've sweetened and whipped up with some vanilla. This is our whipped cream, which I am going to pour on top of our yogurt here. I'm gonna very, very gently fold the whipped cream into the yogurt. The whipped cream combined with the yogurt is what is going to make this just feel so light and fluffy and elegant like a mousse. Next, I'm going to pour in the strawberry puree. And we're gonna continue just gently folding the strawberries in to our mousse. You don't have to blend this 100% because it will look so beautiful in the glass with some swirls and ripples of strawberries. So I have some pretty glasses here. I have three glasses, one for me, one for Samantha, one for Kevin. And I'm just gonna add a nice amount of this mousse to each glass it is so beautiful, that white next to that red. Look at how beautiful these are. If it were fresh strawberry season, I would slice up a few and just garnish the top with a few fresh strawberries. Let's give it a quick taste. I'm sure neither Kevin or Samantha would mind if I took one small bite of my dessert before supper. Oh, it's so good. Light and fluffy, and actually it tastes like summer because of the strawberries. Well, that was quite a wonderful time together today. We milked the cow, we separated the cream off of fresh milk, and we turned one gallon of fresh milk into seven cups of Greek yogurt. Then we made a really nice, light and fluffy strawberry yogurt mousse. We covered a lot in a short amount of time. I really do enjoy sharing all of the things that I've learned here on the homestead, things that I've learned to turn into food for my family. It's one of the most favorite things ever for me is to make and provide really great, healthy, nutritious food for my, for my family. And I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. You guys, if you are enjoying videos like this, make sure that you hit the subscribe button also remember that the best way you can help us here on the homestead is just to share our videos on your social media. Until next time, thank you so much for stopping by our homestead. Take care and God bless.